everyone, this is Tom from Vermibag. This is part three of my series on vermicomposting 101. This particular video is going to go over bedding. I mean, bedding is one of the most important things you can do in your worm bin. I mean, it's what the worms live in. It's the medium that they exist in, that they lay their cocoons in. And if you make bad bedding, you're not going to have a successful worm bin. Absolutely not. Now, there's a lot of videos out there uh, to show you how to make worm bedding, and some of them from manufacturers too, and they have you basically put some coconut courier in the bottom of the system, and then throw some shredded newspaper and shredded cardboard on top of it and wet it down. So, basically something like this. So, this is just shredded newspaper, take it and I rip it into real small shreds, throw it in here, fluff it up, and it has some chunks of cardboard in here. Now, if you take a little bit of coconut courier, put it on the bottom, wet this whole thing down, and stick your worms in it, I guarantee you they're going to be trying to escape in the morning. So, at the end of this video, I'm actually going to mix this all up with water, put some coconut courier on the bottom of it, and on half of it, I'm going to go ahead and make it like they suggest on a lot of the videos. Just this paper, the cardboard, and some coconut courier on the bottom. And on the other half, I'm going to use the bedding that I make today I'm going to throw some worms right in the middle of it and we'll let it sit a week and we'll see what it looks like. So that'll be a separate video from this. Now you may want to look, I have a video I did some time back, it's uh, episode 45. And what I did in that video is I put coconut coir in a container, just pure coconut coir, and on the other half I made bedding similar to what I'm making today. So I've kind of done this experiment once before. I put worms in there, I let it go a week, and when I finished that, on the coconut courier side, there were absolutely no worms. On the half that had the worm bedding that I made, it was full of worms. All the worms were over in that area. Now there's coconut courier in my worm bedding, but it's not pure coconut courier. And there's a real difference. I mean, the worms will go into coconut courier, but they don't love it. So today I'm going to take you step by step on how I make the worm bedding. And I, I did, I've done this before, but I normally do it on a large scale because I go through so much of it. So I decided to go ahead and do it on a smaller scale. So I'm going to try and make five gallons. That'd be a good amount for almost anybody to make. So I've never done this amount before, so I'm kind of second guessing how much I want to put in each of the ingredients into it too. And I don't measure stuff out. I put about this much and about that much. So it, it doesn't really matter. It's just the combination of things that all work together to make the good worm bedding. And some people say that, you know, when I did the comparison of the coconut courier to my original bedding, that it wasn't fair because I had coffee grounds uh, in my bedding. And I do. I do put coffee grounds in my, uh, the bedding when I make it. But if you take a pile of coffee grounds and throw it in a worm bed, I'll guarantee you there aren't going to be a whole bunch of worms going over to it. Worms don't really like coffee grounds that much either. They'll eat them, and you mix it in, they eat it. They don't particularly like the coconut courier all that much, but they'll eat it. You just put white paper or shredded newspaper and cardboard like I'm going to do on this other one, you put that in there, they don't really like that either, but they'll eat it. So all those items, the worms don't really love it, but if you mix it all together, let it sit for a couple weeks, they love it. Why? I don't know. It, it definitely has to do something with the microbial activity in it as it starts breaking that stuff down. There's somehow a lot of food with the combination of all that stuff. It's like a magnet for the worms, and they just really, really go into this uh, worm bedding. So I'm going to take you through here and show you the items uh, that I'm going to add to the worm bedding, and then we'll set it up and we'll add all these items, mix it up and try and come up with about five gallons, hopefully. Okay, so here's the items I'm going to add. Now this is just a cross shred of paper. Uh, they're about one and a half inches long or something. This is super, super common. It's white bleach paper. Uh, a lot of people say it's really, you know, not good for the worms. I use it all the time. I haven't had any issues at all with it. And this is the stuff I get so much of it that I really want to use it. You don't have to, but it's going to go in a landfill somewhere. I doubt they're going to recycle. I say they will, but why not use it? It's what we have. Now this is a micro shred. These are actually newspapers shredded up through a micro shredder. 
I really like the micro shred. Here's the newspaper that I use. And when you run it through a micro shred, you can see how fine it is. And compare it to the the coarse paper. There's a big difference between the two of these. You know, if you're going to buy a shredder, if you can get a micro shredder, that's fine. Uh, one that'll shred cardboard, that's yeah, a little bit more difficult, but uh, at least for shredding newspapers, and newspapers work just beautifully. What I'm going to add in this system, since a lot of people can't shred cardboard in a shredder, I'm going to go ahead and add shredded, uh, hand shredded cardboard, and uh, this is just a paper uh, sack that I got from a grocery store. There's not very much there. I just one paper sack and just a couple large pieces of uh, cardboard. And then I have my coconut coir. This happens to be a little piece that I have left over from one of these uh, five kilo blocks. Now I saw somebody on one of the YouTube channels or on uh, Facebook posted that uh, Walmart I think had these on for like $7.95 for a five kilo block which is a great deal because this thing will make at least five, five gallons, so 25 gallons at least, because we're not going to use that much of it. So great deal. And so this is, I'm expecting that little piece there, that's about a, a quarter or a fifth of that. That's about how much I'm going to probably use to make this five gallons. And right there I have a little tub full of coffee grounds. There happens to be a couple orange peels in there too, because I get them from work and a couple of people threw some orange peels in there of coffee grounds, so it's not going to hurt anything. And I have one little cup of ground up eggshells. I'm going to throw that in just because I have them. I keep all my eggshells all the time. Now I normally add alfalfa meal uh, since I have it for the garden. But it's kind of expensive to buy. And so what I'm going to do this time, I'm actually just mowed a section of the yard. Now I don't have any chemicals or anything in my grass. So I'm just going to take this grass instead. It's high in nitrogen. Because the reason I'm using the alfalfa meal is to try and kickstart the system and get it to heat up a little bit in the in the bucket, start the decomposition process, and this grass will do the same thing. So instead of alfalfa meal this time, I'm going to use this little bucket, probably about a gallon of grass clippings. Now, if you use these, make sure they don't have any chemicals on you. Spray your yard or something like that. And then what's underneath this is actually the leftovers from a screening I did on the castings. So this is all the stuff when I screen my castings that stayed in the screen. And I normally just throw this back on the top of the worm bin and run it through again and see if I can get it to decompose. But this is perfect for kickstarting the system. So there's probably about almost a gallon there, three quarters of a gallon. I'm going to dump all of that into the system to add just a tremendous amount of microbial activity into the system and really get it going. And you can see there is a ton of seeds and different things. but. You put those seeds through the system enough times and they'll eventually uh, decompose. So, and then the last thing I have is I have one five gallon bucket here and I have it about half full of water. So I'm gonna start off with about two and a half gallons of water and I'm gonna start mixing this stuff up and uh, see how it goes. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just for I have a little bit more room, I'm actually gonna dump this two and a half gallons of water to a little bit bigger, uh, this isn't a five gallon, it's more like an eight gallon bucket. That'll give me a little bit more room to mix things around. So. And in there, now I'm going to dump this coconut courier chunk that I have inside there. I'm going to give that a couple minutes, let that soak up and mix up, mix it all in, and then we'll throw some of the other ingredients in. While I'm waiting for that coconut coir to soak up the water, like I said, these are the five kilo blocks of coconut coir you can get. Uh, you can get the smaller blocks that are probably about the size of the piece that I was using in there, but they're a lot more expensive. So you're much better off to buy one of these. And like I said, I saw uh, something on Facebook, I think Walmart had these for like seven bucks or eight bucks. I have to order mine off Amazon, but if I watch it and stuff, I can normally find a pretty good deal, about 11 bucks, 13, 12 bucks, 13 bucks, something like that delivered. That's not too bad. I mean, this is five kilos, 11 pounds, and this will make, like I said, at least 25 gallons of bedding. So, uh, pretty good deal. The stuff works pretty good. And to don't try chipping it off. The best way to get what you need out of this is, I have a little small tray like this, 
I just fill this thing up with water, about two inches of water here, or you can do it in a bucket. And then I just set this inside of it. And just let it sit there for 15 minutes or something like that. It'll absorb most of the water. And then when you get done, you can just flake off all of the loose stuff that's on here until you have enough in there. And then just take this and put it in a five gallon bucket or a tote and stuff and store it until the next time you need it. Okay, all this coconut coir has uh, absorbed. And you can look now how wet it is. But for me, actually, it's not wet enough. I actually put too much coconut coir in order to make just five gallons. And this is more like a thick mud almost. I want it to be really watery because I need uh, enough water in there to that I can add a lot of paper and cardboard. Things are going to absorb water. So what I'm going to do is add about another gallon of water into this. So I'm probably going to end up with more than five gallons. And that's fine. Uh, when you make yours, you saw the size of that little coconut uh, core block I have. Just don't put quite so much in. Put a pretty small piece in. Uh, but now it's really, there's a, if you feel in here, a lot of this coconut coir is floating on the top. And down at the bottom, it's just like pure water. There's probably about two inches. It's really, 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 you know, liquidy right now. So the best way I found to do this is when it's liquidy like this, that's when you add all these ingredients you want to mix in really well. So I'm just going to dump the coffee grounds in there. Mix them up a little bit. And then that way this stuff mix up really homogeneously, you know, equally throughout the material. And it's real simple to mix all this stuff in right now, too. So I'm going to add my eggshells. I'm adding about a cup of eggshells. Get mixed up real good. Now I'm going to add all of this. Uh, again, these are just the leftover remnants of uh, sifting my castings that came out of a harvest here last week. They've dried out just a little bit, but uh, there's still a ton of microbial activity. And there's quite, this is quite a bit. But it's what I have, so I'm going to dump it in there. Now, if you don't have any of this, or if, you don't, if this is the first worm bin you're setting up, if you have a compost bin outside, get about a you know, half a gallon or so of good compost out of that uh, system. If you don't have a compost pile, then find some good garden soil somewhere. And again, take about <coughs> you know, half a gallon or so of good garden soil and mix that in here. You need to put some soil in here because that has that all the out outdoor microbial bacteria and stuff that'll kind of get this system going. As I mix this up, it's so there's a you know a fair amount of coffee grounds in here. Again, like I was saying before, worms don't particularly love that. Any single item I put in here, the worms don't really like that much. But when you combine all this stuff together and let it sit for a little while, it's totally different. Now I'm going to add my greens, just like a salad, huh? So I'm going to add that, about a gallon of just grass clippings or a lot of clover, it looks like in here. And that's going to have a bunch of nitrogen in it. So that should really kickstart this system a little bit. It's probably going to heat up a little bit in these buckets. And that's exactly what I want it to do uh, to start off with. No worms in here right now. Uh, there may be by the time I put it in the system because I put all those castings, those leftover casting screenings. And there's a lot of cocoons and stuff in there. There may have actually been a couple small worms that I didn't see. So many times when I use my bedding that's been sitting outside for two or three weeks, I notice there's worms in it. So. So now I have a nice soupy mess, super, super wet. Now I'm going to start adding some of this paper. First thing I'm going to add is the cardboard. Cardboard's about, you know, probably the only thing out here that the worms actually kind of like. They do like cardboard, especially the corrugated type. And if you're ripping cardboard up by hand, I mean, the easiest cardboard to rip up is the little Chinese boxes, the cheap boxes you get at like a dollar stores and stuff like that where they send a lot of this import stuff in. 
those cardboard boxes aren't very strong. So if you find a good quality cardboard box, try and rip it up, and it'll kill your hands. So, and all I did on here again, I didn't run this through a shredder. I would normally do that. I run most of my stuff through a shredder. Again, the smaller the surface, or the smaller the item is, the more surface area there is. So if you run these through a shredder, it probably increases the surface area tenfold at least. That's more surface area for the bacteria to attack and stuff, so it's going to speed up your decomposition process. So if getting castings quickly is really important to you, then you really need to run all these materials through a shredder, because it'll really speed things up. This will take a lot longer to decompose than a piece of cardboard that's uh, shredded up like this. So let's go ahead and put this stuff in. And again, that isn't, that's one big paper sack from the grocery store and a couple sides of one cardboard box. Not even a full uh, big cardboard box. I have a decent amount, but not too much. Now I'm going to start adding some paper. I'm going to add this uh, core shred first. This is the most common paper that you're going to find. Again, it's just a bleached office paper. And even if you don't have a shredder, if you talk to a few people, I know you can get some of this stuff. Now, best way, just kind of reach down and pull the material from the bottom. It's really wet at the bottom. It's just a souping mess down there. And as the material filters back down through here, most of the water gets absorbed. And it's the paper that tends to clump up the most, uh, this coarser paper. So, you're best at it kind of a little bit at a time. I probably added too much initially there for that shredded paper. The whole idea of the coconut coir and stuff is to coat this stuff before it uh, won't clump together so much. That's pretty good. It's not really clumping together too much. Got a little bit more. Keep working this. Down down to the bottom, pull that wet material up to the top. And this is enough bedding for somebody that's running a small system for to last quite a while. You're not gonna I add a little bit of this every time I do a feeding. Okay, now I'm going to add some of this finely shredded newspaper to the mix. And the whole idea is to get this down to a, a damp feeling, not wet, damp. And you may have to, what I'll do is I'm going to end up transferring this back to another bucket at least once, maybe twice, just to make sure I get the moisture content on it right. Because if you make this too wet, and uh, the water will settle down to the bottom of these buckets, and this material will kind of sour on you. I mean, the worms like it just fine, but it, when you grab a hold of it with your hands, it stinks pretty bad. It kind of sticks to your hands. I mean, it's hard to wash off, actually. It's something about that smell. It just absorbs into your skin almost. So it's important when you mix this stuff up that you... Uh, get it damp, like a, a, a wrung out sponge. Now the top feels really good right now. It's, I can still wring water out of it though, you can see that. So it's definitely still too wet. But getting closer. That's more.
So now what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and start transferring some of the contents from this bucket into this bucket. Because when I get to the bottom of this white one, it's going to be pretty wet. But it's so hard to get to the bottom of it right now, I need to take some of it out. So I know I'm going to have moisture going to the bottom of these systems. So in order to compensate for that, I'm just going to throw a handful of micro shreds in the bottom of this right now before I start off. And I'm going to start transferring this material in there. And this all feels really good. This top stuff's really worked over really well. I'm probably going to add just another scoop of paper, kind of mix it in a little bit. Okay, add a little bit more. Now, this one's getting a little bit wetter. I this very bottom section is pretty wet, but I almost got five gallons over here. Last little bit's a little bit wet. So again, I'm going to add some of that micro shred to it. Mix it in a little bit. A little bit more. Add a little bit more of this wetter stuff on it now. Mix it in. A little bit more. Don't be afraid to add too much paper. Uh, there's a lot of liquid in here, you just don't realize it. This extra stuff I'm adding here is really a micro shredded uh, newspapers for the most part. And almost any shredder will handle newspaper. So I'd really recommend shredding it. Uh, it helps things a lot. Now see this is you can see the water that drips out of that. So this is really wet here. It's at the top, but let's go ahead and add a little bit more dry stuff to it. And you could be adding more cardboard if you want instead, or whatever you want. I mean, how much white paper, how much cardboard and shredded newspaper you use is not really, I think, that important. I mean, I think in a, for the worm's point of view, They'd probably prefer you give them 100% uh, shredded cardboard. They do like cardboard. But from a being green standpoint, I think we ought to use some of this white paper. So that's what they get from me. They get cardboard, but they get a lot of white paper too. It's not, it's not bad there. One last one that's kind of wet. Mix that in just a little bit. Okay. So that's, that feels pretty good. So that's just the bucket. Now this bucket, let me pull it, if I can get down to the bottom, I'll show you how wet it is down here. If I go down to the very bottom, and a lot of water in there. So I definitely need to add more paper to this section here. I'll throw a bunch in there. And then, probably later today, I'll take these buckets and I may transfer them one more time into an, another bucket just to make sure they're about right. Then I can literally leave these things outside for Almost forever. I mean, the longer you leave them outside or leave them in a garage, wherever you want to put them, the better the worms are going to like the material. Because this stuff's going to start decomposing. It's moist. And uh, all that microbial activity starts to kick off. And that is what the worms just absolutely love. This is feeling pretty good now. Now, I saw a YouTube video here a while back. A lady was uh, setting up a bin, and I happened to watch it. And you hear people mention all the time, you know, about this, about the moisture of a wrung out sponge. And I don't think anybody knows what a wrung out sponge feels like. Because you see people, and they can grab their compost and squeeze it, and all this water comes out of it. 
And what she was saying, and I agree with it, go get a sponge from your, gar or from your kitchen, dip it in the water, and then wring it out, and then feel it. Does that texture and how the moisture content of that sponge feel like the moisture content of your bedding? Then you can really tell. I mean, it's, of course, it's different texture, but you can feel that moisture. Most of the time, when you see people grab bedding like this here, you can see it just, uh, there's a sheen to it, it's so wet. I mean, if they squeeze it, I squeeze this now, I can get a couple drops at the end here. But uh, it's really getting close to the consistency we want. But, uh, I mean, I think that's a really good idea. Get a sponge and actually feel how wet a wrung out sponge feels like. And then try and get this bedding to feel like that. And uh, you'll have a perfect consistency and moisture content on your systems. So I was shooting for five gallons and I ended up with 10 gallons. So uh, I guess I, I'm not good at making small batches, sorry. This is feeling really good now. I mean, it might be a tiny little bit wetter than I need it still. So I'm gonna add maybe just one more handful or two of this paper. And just mix it down into the bottom especially. Because all this water is gonna wanna settle down on the bottom. So if you have a layer of paper down at the bottom, that'll absorb most of that. Yeah, this, this looks really good. So, this is what we ended up with. I mean, and again, everything that's in here, you know, it's a huge carbon source. There are the coffee grounds, and there are some greens in it and stuff, but uh, it's basically the same as you just grabbing a bunch of shredded paper and throwing it, and cardboard, and throwing it onto your bin. Except this here is mixed in with some coconut coir, some soil, a little bit of green grass, and some coffee grounds. And again, any one of these things by themselves, the worms, they don't really go too crazy over it. But you mix them all together here, you let it sit for a week or two, put this in there, and these worms will be absolutely all over this stuff. Now the process that I just did is how I do my worm bidding. And this is kind of like the containers. There's a million different ways you could do it. I do it like this, and I know for a fact you'll be successful if you do it like this. Now, there's a lot of people out there, and maybe they'll chime in on this video, that are doing the bedding like this now. And it really does work. And there's a little bit of effort into this to make this bedding. But if you do this, and you have like 10 gallons of bedding, what did this take me? Maybe 10 minutes to make this. This 10 gallons is going to last you for quite a few months. Depends how big your system is, of course. But if you have just a small starter system, this is going to last you a long time. So it's not that much effort, because the only other effort you have to do is just feed your worms every once in a while. And this will really help you be successful. Other things you can add to this, and I do it all the time. Uh, if you have cereal boxes, uh, I'd like this for uh, macaroni and cheese boxes and stuff like that. I grab those things and I throw them in here all the time too. And, and there's nothing stopping you. If you end up with some more coffee grounds from uh, work or from a neighbor or whatever, and you have a couple of these uh, containers outside, go take it, dump the coffee in it, mix it up just a little bit and just let it sit there. Just keep adding to this while it's outside. And if you use this bedding once you order some new worms, uh, I think there's a very good likelihood when you put the worms in here, they're not going to try and escape. Now, when, when you use bedding like this, and I'm going to do this little uh, other video on today, with some coconut coir and then just mixed in, I'll get all this paper wet. Something like this, those worms have grown up their whole entire lifespan inside a really nice bed run somewhere. They got really nice material. You take them out of there, so they're basically at the Ritz. You take them out, they throw them in a bag, they ship them to you, and then you put them in this, that's like going down Motel 8. They aren't going to like it. Now, worms that are born into this stuff, they don't know any better. So that's why they say if a worm is born into a certain environment and stuff, they tend to stay in there. But you put new worms in here, and 
you're going to have continuous problems unless you stick a light on this thing the whole time to keep them in here. But if you add material like this that we just made, this material, you put the worms in here after it's been sitting outside for a week, uh, those worms are going to like this. Uh, I really highly doubt that they'll try leaving it. Uh, I'd be real surprised. And if you do, it'll only be a few. So now that you've made your bedding material, uh, now you can order worms. So I mean, to this point here, from the last video, I looked at the different containers that we had. And again, there's a million of those. So depending on what your needs are, how much you know, we want to produce, how big of a system you need, how big your family is, you've hopefully chosen the system you're going to start off with. So get your system ready. If you have to drill holes in it with a Rubbermaid tub or whatever, get it all ready, get it set up. Make your bedding like this now. Take this bedding, these Lowe's five gallon buckets, put a lid on this thing and stick it outside your garage and let it sit there until your worms arrive. Uh, and I'll have to do a video next day or so, or next week, excuse me, on uh, probably on moisture. I think the next one's gonna be is controlling moisture. And then following that, I will try and do another video on worms. But uh, seems like there's always one thing I forget to tell you. One thing you need to remember is now that you've made this bedding and you put it in those buckets, make sure you seal those buckets really good uh, when you put them outside because otherwise you tend to get sometimes flies will lay their eggs and stuff in there because it's nice and moist and you'll get all kinds of weird things laying your eggs in there and then you're going to turn around and put this bedding into your worm bin and they'll hatch in there and you open it up and all these flies will be coming out. So like the Lowe's buckets, that's a really tight lid, shouldn't be an issue with it. If you have a different bucket that fits kind of lightly, maybe put a piece of plastic and then stick the lid on it. But seal them up, don't leave them open because otherwise you're going to have some unwanted pests in your bedding. So that's it for today. Uh, hopefully I explained bedding at least the best I could and hopefully you understand how I make my bedding. Again, I don't have exact ingredients and amounts I put in. I kind of second guess it for the most part, but you kind of could see the, uh, about the percentages that I put into the system and stuff. Uh, I shot for five gallons, I ended up with 10 gallons, so I don't know if you want to trust my measurements that much anyway. But I hope you found this video helpful, and I'm almost certain that if you make bedding like this, put it into your new system, uh, your worms are going to love it. I don't think you're going to have any issues with worms trying to get out, and uh, the next thing you have to do is just learning how to control the moisture and what to feed them. And I'll do that in some follow-up videos coming up or so and try and cover those subjects too. So this is Tom from Burmy Bag. Until next time.